Hey, what's up everybody? It's Havoc. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install a USB network card into your Synology NAS. I went and picked up a 2.5 gig card. I want a little extra speed because I'm upgrading my network to 2.5 gig. Unfortunately, the Synology NAS that I have only does gigabit. It has two gigabit ports. Why they don't include at least 2.5 gig in their NASes, I don't know. I have two of them. Both don't have 2.5 gig. But uh, yeah, so I went and purchased one. I'll put a link in the description below of what I got. I can show you real quick here if I go into my control panel and I go to Info Center. You can see I have it plugged in. It is a TrendNet. And uh, again, I'll put a link to the description below. I have it plugged into the back of the NAS. And some of the NASes, you can do the back. Some require you to do the front. It just depends on which one has the most power from what I've read on the internet. But the first thing we need to do is we need to go and find what our model of CPU is, and then we can find the architecture for it. And you have a couple different ways to do that. The first one is you can go to your control panel and then go back to info like we did earlier. And we can see here, I have a DS 920 plus it has an Intel Celeron uh, J4125. If you know what the architecture is, great. You're ahead of the curve. Um, I do not know. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the Synology knowledge base and look at what kind of CPU my NAS has. I'll put a link in the description below of where to get that web page. So here we're on that page and what we wanna do is we wanna find our NAS. And on the left side here, I have a 920 plus. I'm gonna to go to the, sorry, on the right side, I'm gonna to go to the X20 series. And then we can see the 920 plus, blow this up for us. We have the 920 plus right here and it is Gemini Lake. So we need to make sure we pay attention and remember Gemini Lake, cause that's the specific driver we're going to end up downloading. The next thing we need to do is go over to BBQQ's GitHub site and find the correct driver. Link in the description below. Here we are on BBQQ's site. And something to note is your network card needs to be Realtek. And I think BBQQ has some info on that down here, models that work. Yeah, so here are some models of 2.5 gig and five gigs, uh, realtech.org. So if you're looking to buy one, you can click um, their link. I think they're affiliate links. Um, so something, something there you can easily find. But what we need to do is we want to go back and we want to install the, the package here. So we can click on releases. And the newest release as of right now was last week. This video is at the beginning of December, 2024. And then you can see here, this is important to remember. You need to know what version of BSM you have. So if we go back to our NAS, and then we can see here again, we can go control panel and then info. Our DSM version is 7.2.2. So we need to make sure we download the suffix as 7.2. We'll need to remember this here. We'll come back to that. But go ahead and click the 2.1 point whatever. This is the latest driver. And then down here under assets, we need to find our driver package. So if we go back to our CPU, we are Gemini Lake and we need the 7.2. So we'll scroll down to Gemini Lake here. And then we have Right here is 7.2. We'll go ahead and download that. Now that we have that downloaded, we need to enable SSH. So what we'll do here is go into control panel and then terminal and SMNP. And where it says enable SSH service, we'll click that and then click apply. And we need to remember to disable this when we're done. We don't want this enabled all the time. I'll remind you at the end now that we have that set, we need to go into package center and you'll go up to settings and then you'll make sure to hit the option to enable third party installations. Once you have that setting enabled, we'll click on manual install. We'll click browse. We'll choose that file we just downloaded from BBQQ and then we'll hit next. 
and you can see third party package, it's not verified. Are you really sure you want to do it? We'll click agree. And then you can see here, all real tech stuff, run after installation and then done. And what it'll do is it'll say failed to install the package and that's okay. It's going to do that the first time. So let's go ahead and close this. Now what we need to do is we need to go in and run that SSH command that we saw back over here, this long command here. I'll put that down in the description below. Again, you can get that off the BBQQ's site. Now we need to open up your favorite terminal software and connect into our Synology NAS. Once you've connected into your NAS via your favorite terminal software, something like PuTTY or Solar PuTTY, you'll connect into it and you'll come to your login screen. Now what we want to do is get logged in and then once you're logged in, run the command that we have back there from BBQQ. So I'll go ahead and paste it in and then we'll hit enter and it wants our password. So go ahead and type in your password. Once you run the command, it's not going to give you any message or prompt that it was successful. So don't worry about nothing popping up here. So next, now that we have that all done, we'll click on package center again. We'll do the manual install one more time. Agree and then done. It's updating. And now if we go here to installed, we can see right here, our drivers are installed and running. Now all you need to do is go over to your NAS, plug in your network card. What I'll do here is to see if it's up and running. So we'll go to control panel. We'll go to network and then network interface. And here we go. We have a third device where before I only had two devices. So this third device is my 2.5 gig card. Now you'll just plug in your network cable and you're good to go. You now have 2.5 gig access um, on your Synology NAS. A couple things I want to bring up here when it comes to this is there are only certain network cards that'll work. So make sure it has that real tech, you know, chip in it. And you can get those off of that VBQQ's GitHub page. Make sure to support them. I'll put a link in the description below to the TrendNet one that I'm using. It is also not a great long-term solution for a couple of reasons. One reason is this is not an official, you know, plugin or package. It's done by the community. So at some point, if the community stops updating the drivers or anything, you might lose the connectivity. There's no support here for that. And the second is because it's not official, whenever you do an update to your DSM, it'll break that. So we're in December of 2024 at the time of this video. What happened was those big patches they released in the middle of November, 2024 to DSM completely broke the drivers here. And as you can see, if we go back to uh, this page right here, these pre-release drivers were done last week. So, you know, there were no drivers from October 10th to last week. We'll just say, you know, December 5th. Let's, you know, just making up a number here. And what that means is as soon as you patched your DSM with those November updates, this driver and your 2.5 gig no longer worked. We had to wait until there were, you know, a new driver package pushed out. So about a month, um, there were no drivers for this. So just make sure you keep that aware whenever you do an update, especially a big one to DSM, um, it will break that package. And you'll see in the package center here, you'll see that, um, it'll say something like, you know, this requires an update or something like that. And then you have to go through this process and, you know, but, um, overall it works great. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I use it on the rear port. Like I said, some people say on their, uh, Synology is only works on the front port. So just, you know, make sure you test that stuff there. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. I'm kind of new at this one, and this was a, a fun little project that I wanted to take on and kind of share with everybody. But uh, let me know what 
you know, your success was and how this worked out for you. And then once again, make sure you go and turn off your SMTP or SSH server. We'll uncheck that and hit apply. You don't want to leave that open, especially on your NAS. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good.